Hey y'all, so I have Corey here with Arbor Image Tree Care and they are a locally owned small business here locally in Oklahoma City. They are the company that had helped us out at our previous home on some trees down the street and they are staffed with certified arborist and when we needed the trees here at our current new home trimmed up, they're the first people we called. So I will turn it over to Corey and he can tell us a little bit about himself and a little bit about Arbor Image Tree Care. Yeah, thank you, Sydney, uh, for having us out. Uh, we're uh, always uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about trees. It's what we do and it's what we uh, love. So uh, we're a, uh, uh, like she said, a, a certified, I'm, I'm a certified arborist uh, through the uh, International Society of Arboriculture. Uh, it's, uh, it's about the highest certification you can get as far as uh, uh, an international certification. I wish they offered it in, or wish they required it, excuse me, in Oklahoma. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it's just now gaining traction in this part of the country. Okay, so it is required in some other states. It is. Okay. It's, it's voluntary here. Okay. And, I didn't know uh, that. So, which which makes it difficult to decipher, you know, on who you're using for uh, your tree care. Sure. So, um, but anyway, uh, we've been in business 13 years and uh, uh, started right here in the greater Oklahoma City uh, area. And really, uh, just uh, developed a, a, a great uh, love for tree health and nutrition. That's kind of what sets us apart from most of tree service companies. We like to refer to it as tree care because it's very uh, uh, specific to uh, you know what really goes on underneath the ground. There's a lot that happens above, and everybody sees that and can take care of that. But if we can uh, if we can help with what goes on below the soil. Uh, then I think we've got uh, a better ability to put out a better uh, you know, service to you. Sure. Yeah, so um, when I posted the video on Instagram and YouTube last week, I specifically asked people to come to us with some questions that they, that they wanted to ask you on this video. And so I have a list of questions and we can go over those questions. And then at the end, we can get into some other things, but um, let's just go ahead and start with the questions if you're good with that. Absolutely. Okay, so one of the questions that I got was, what is the best time to trim flowering trees? Flowering trees, yes. okay. Flowering well, specifically. Yeah, so you know, before spring, when they begin to flower, okay. because we want to have uh, reduced or made those heading cuts or what not heading cuts always but uh, we want to have trimmed those limbs so that when it's time to flower you don't have any dead wood that that tree has to try and uh, you know circulate uh, nutrition through it's 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 going all to the healthy tissue and you're gonna get a better uh, more bountiful flowering out of it okay perfect so the next one was do surrounding shrubs and trees compete for water absolutely Trees, uh, so trees have four functions in a root. Uh, uh, anchorage, obviously, keep them stable. Conduction, so that they can pull it up through the tree. Storage, because they, when they lose their leaves, they have to be able to make it through times of winter, for example. Uh, and then the final one is, um, oh gosh, uh, <laughs> the most important one, absorption. There we go, absorption roots. Um, so um, uh, whenever these trees are, uh, uh, competing with shrubs around them, uh, they're going to penetrate further. Their root systems are further, typically the drip line and beyond. Okay. And so, stop right there. Explain drip line, because I know okay. there's a lot of people that will ask that question. Yeah. So explain drip line, because I know it's something where people talk about fertilizing trees and things like that. You should fertilize around the drip line. And so explain drip line a little bit. Absolutely. No, I, I, please stop me at any point. The drip line, for example, let's take this magnolia okay. over here. Okay, so out where the leaves stop, that's considered the drip line okay. because that's where it would drip okay. uh, if it were raining. Okay. So uh, the absorption roots are, are pressing beyond that to find water and nutrients. Uh, shrubs, on the other hand, and flowers have such minimal root systems, especially those that are not considered perennial. You know, a tree is really a woody perennial. Sure. Uh, and you have perennial flowers and perennial shrubs versus an annual. Uh, so the root systems are much more uh, large and, and uh, able to penetrate more. But yes, do they compete? Absolutely. The tree most likely 
is is well advanced in, in penetrating areas that those cannot even reach. Okay, and that's so interesting that you say you know those four specific things because I think there are a lot of things that people totally forget trees do. Right? We just think of them as like, hey, they're shade and they're pretty. In the winter, they go dormant, but there's so much going on below the surface and within that tree that having somebody come out and take care of your trees like a certified arborist is super important because just the everyday person, you know, I, I know a little bit about trees, but I don't know a ton about trees and not everybody can know everything about gardening and landscaping and trees. So I think it's super beneficial to have an arborist come out, take a look at your trees and at least point you in the right direction. Absolutely. And hey, we're still learning too. Sure. I assure you, that's the fun part about this. Everybody's always learning all the time, right? Yes. yes. Um, okay. So I had a lot of questions about feeding mature trees and there was a lot of questions on i haven't fed my mature trees in a lot of years should i be doing this and if so how often do mature trees need to be fed man that's a great question so so feeding trees happens twice a year Let, uh, let's back up and mature trees obviously this tree has been here lots of years and has probably never been fed uh, so you know we we wonder you know why that is it and it's all about the soil uh, you take us, uh, this neighborhood has been here a lot of years. The soil's fairly undisturbed. So, you know, just to go through soil, and I don't want to get too deep here, but, but uh, you know, basically soil starts at a substrate that's basically rock down low. As it weathers over years and years, it, it loosens and loosens and finally becomes soil. And then the leaf litter, the, you know, the leaves that fall and the, the twigs and, and, and sometimes in a forest line, even a, a dead animal carcass, sorry to be, so graphic, but nonetheless, you have this decomposition of the soil that creates rich humus that uh, will naturally be a food source for the tree. In an urban environment, we rake up leaves. You can see there's not a leaf in here, maybe a few hiding back here, but we rake all that up, so we lose all that benefit. Sure. And then we tend to overwater, uh, okay. so we have all this working against it. Oh, and we use herbicides and synthetic fertilizers, which are totally salt-based, so we, we lose all this capacity for this natural food source. So what we do is supplement basically what's happening in a forest floor is the best way to say it. Okay. Uh, and do we, we do it twice a year. In the spring, we work on foliage, lushness, color, uh, you know, density, uh, because we have foliage to deal with. In the winter time, we're building root mass, again, below the soil. Uh, we want to, a, a healthy tree has a healthy root system. And the more, this is where they gain from the, or they, they have an advantage over your shrubs and flowers because they're working in Oklahoma at least. Our soil temperatures never fall really below 45. You know, we had 21, in 21, we had 15 days below zero. Right. Very unprecedented. But typically our soils, the roots are working year round. Sure. So we, we feed twice a year. Okay. And something that I just picked up on that is the, picking up all the leaves, right? There's so many companies out there, lawn companies and things like that, that are in charge of picking up leaves because they maybe look a little bit, you know, untidy to say. And um, while we don't have any leaves up here, we do in the backyard, but essentially leaves are free mulching food is what you're telling me. Exactly. Okay. Sort of part of the soil food web is the technical term for it, but uh, all that decomposition sure. is what's creating micro, my, uh, beneficial microbes uh, earthworm activity, you know, uh, beneficial nematodes, all the all the good, the life in the soil mm -hmm. that herbicides just simply zap. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, perfect. Good to know. Um, so the next question is, recently trimmed trees, do I need to seal the cuts with anything? Yeah. Well, the, 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 thankfully you just did. You know, there was an older school of thought uh, with tar you know, uh, and I always, you know, joke around, you know, I mean, can you imagine a tree trimmer, a chainsaw on one hand and a bucket of tar on the other? <laughs> trying to, okay. So, you know, that's kind of an older school of thinking. Actually, the research, even Texas A&M uh, has uh, a great fact sheet. Gig them. We're Aggies, so gig them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but uh, they have a fact sheet on how it actually inhibits cambial layer growth. Okay. Which is the vascular tissues that compartmentalize wounds. You can see there's some great healed wounds up here. Uh, but you know, it, it inhibits that. So, uh, what we recommend, uh, is dormant oil, which is mineral oil. It's 98.5% to be exact, sorry, uh, okay. uh, mineral oil. Okay. Uh, but it is, uh, it is basically, it does two things. It seals 
cuts after you've pruned or you know storm damage like here we've got a, a massive wound from storm damage in 2020 that it's sealing all of that uh, those fibers that are exposed but the second thing it does is it uh, suffocates insect uh, whether they be eggs larvae whatever stage they're in uh, that we spray it, uh, but it suffocates their ability to basically uh, breathe, if you will. Okay, and that's a great point when you're talking about dormant oil because when I posted the video on you guys trimming our trees up back, I think it was in February, mid-February or so, there was a lot of questions and a lot of concerns about pruning that time of year and were they pre-treated and were they treated after with something like dormant oil and the answer to a lot of those questions were yes. So so, um, you know, just I think doing due diligence to not only trim your trees, but in turn sealing them with things like dormant oil will give you the best chances of success with your tree. Yeah, that's one of many things, but yes, that to, to answer that specific question. Okay. So the next question was, this is kind of a specific question, but someone asked, and so they have a large live oak. Um, and they think that the top, the crown of the tree was struck by lightning. The top of the tree is dead at this point, like all through the crown. And should they have an arborist come in and trim that out or is a tree salvageable for, from something like that? Or does it just need to be removed? Yeah. So, you know, in Oklahoma, live oak is a very hardy species. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and certainly lightning can uh, get inside. It basically disrupts the vascular tissues okay. so the water cannot flow. Uh, d doesn't mean though, you know, I mean, my, my recommendation to that person is let's, let's take a look. We're still early spring. We haven't even really leafed out completely. Now live oaks obviously, obviously are a broadleaf evergreen, but uh, you know, you can, uh, we can monitor that. It's, it's likely depending on the wound, and again, we would need to visually see this, but it's likely that we can, it, that the tree will pull out of it just because okay. it's hardy. Okay. Okay. So, you know, now on the other hand, let's don't rush to trimming the top out of anything. Let's, let's see what happens come May, June, when things are uh, uh, really moving, sap's really flowing and, and see what we've got and then make that call. Okay. Awesome. So, talk about cabling split trees and this is something that it was a specific question from YouTube but you guys did some of that work on our multi-trunk mulberry down at the other house it was something where the tree had split due to the weight of the ice storm or started to split at least and you come back you came in and I don't know if cabling is the right term but you did bolt it in that case so you bolted it and um, we absolutely did not want to lose that tree and we didn't want to lose half of the trunks on that tree because it was like a six trunk mulberry and so you guys came in and cabled it a couple years ago that tree's doing fantastic I know mulberries are pretty hardy but that tree's doing fantastic and it was well worth the money we thought um, to get that tree stabilized and keep it long term so um, talk to us about cabling and bolting split trees yeah so uh, very common in Oklahoma with our winds and tornadoes and ice um, you know the the thing that is misunderstood about cabling is, you know, it's important uh, not to girdle a tree, not to go around the trunk of it. Uh, so like a pruning wound, you can see, um, maybe it'd be better to show you one down low uh, if this is okay here. Yeah. But uh, uh, these, these are wounds that have compartmentalized and healed over time. They, at one point, they were exposed pruning cuts, but they have compartmentalized and healed. So if you put a strap around that to cinch something, in other words, or maybe to cable it, you're, gonna, you're going to disrupt that vascular flow. Okay. So the idea, because of compartmentalization, and it's a, it's a theory, Alex Shigo, the grandfather of arboriculture, is the guy who who uh, coined uh, compartmentalization in trees. It's called CODIT, for those who are interested. Um, compartmentaliz compartmentalization of decay in trees is what it stands for. Okay. But anyway, so the, the idea is to drill through it like we did at your, at your other house uh, so that we're not strangling the tree, but we're giving it a, a support by going through the trunk and then, and then bolting it and cinching it back together. 
Now that was a tricky tree, yours. That was a long one. Yes. They're, typically they're not that difficult. That was a tough one. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we were a little bit concerned with how that tree would look once we had it bolted. And we actually, you know, like kind of taped it off and spray painted that bolt black. And over time, it just, was just not even there. It wasn't even existent. We didn't know it was there. I mean, it was there, right? But we didn't even notice it. And to us, looking at something like that was much better than losing half of our tree. Oh, so, yeah. Um, okay, so the last question that I had um, was, and, and there were a number of these same questions, and it was specifically oaks. So, my oak trees randomly lose limbs, some large and some small. Is that like self thinning? Is that a light issue? Tell us about that. Yeah, no, actually, uh, it's called sudden oak drop. I, I know it's technical, but uh, I believe it. Uh, I believe that's the term, and and I, I need to obviously need to do some research here myself. But it, it is a thing. Okay. So what happens is the again the vascular tissues uh, they uh, they are, are are inhibited in some way, whether it be strangling from uh, 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 some sort of uh, strapping or girdling of, of some sort, swings. Sometimes people put swings, uh -huh. in, and it cuts off the vascular flow. Um, and so you will, it, it literally, when they drop, you'll notice they're very spongy. Okay. That you can look at inside and it's real spongy. It's almost soft. So this is just a lack of uh, uh, water and nutrient flow to that particular limb. Typically it happens in the summer. You see a lot of it happen in the summer. Um, th that's one of many reasons that could happen. Maybe it's dead wood. Maybe it's just a, some dead wood that needs cleaned out. It could okay. be another one. Uh, or, uh, you know, um, gosh, there's, there's multiple, uh, things that could, a hypoxylin canker with oak trees in okay. specific, specifically. So there, you know, without looking at it, it's, it's going to be hard to just guess, but there is something called sudden oak drop, I believe is what it's called. Check okay. that one out. I need to check it out too. So you would suggest having an arborist come out, take a look at your specific situation and your specific tree to determine what's going on with that tree. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And we would love to do that. Okay. And you guys, I will also link their information down below. I'll put um, all of their um, company information in the notes so that you guys can contact Corey with Arbor Image if you guys are local and need some tree work done. So, um, okay. So the next thing that it was a specific question of mine. And um, so tell me about tree appraisals. So on you guys' Instagram, and by the way, guys, they have a great Instagram. You should go check it out. And I will link their website down below as well. But I saw something specifically on tree appraisals. And for us, I think trees are, are super important. And they're a selling point for us, especially big mature trees. Down at our other house, we had that medium-sized water oak. And we would have killed to have a tree that we have in this yard down there. So we think that trees add value to our property but maybe not everybody quite understands that talk to me a little bit about tree appraisal okay it's funny i've been uh, uh working with an appraiser uh, lately just kind of asking him you know what what do people usually uh ask about when it comes to the trees on their property mm -hmm. and he said it's not usually it doesn't add necessarily they don't even consider it in, an, in, a, in a house appraisal when they're doing a house right but he said i think what it, it does for the person is it it just adds more value in their eyes sure. They're, they you know number i mean let's energy costs let's say you know if, if it's uh, adding whether it's uh you know cooling in the summer heating in the winter um the aesthetic value you know certainly but also just the uh the sense that you get when you when you pull up to it i mean there research has shown that it adds about 15 percent to your curb appeal value okay that's that's the research we've we've come across okay uh, matter of fact we use that in some of our advertising but uh, as far as the uh, just the well-being you know I, I, I like to say it like this I mean how much the life that we do under the tree whether we hang a swing we take prom wedding pictures we uh, you know play its base in hide-and-seek you know or you know just uh, the the shade you know the, the enjoyment that you get i mean you're doing life under your trees sure. and, and you can't really put a price on that and maybe that's too philosophical i'm sorry but you know i mean it really is what 
you're doing in your trees and there's not a price I feel that you can put to that yeah but to be specific technically I'm sorry no, uh, is fine. to you know I mean he said it didn't really uh, people don't consider it in the in the appraisal of the house so sure I, you know we like I said our research in all the our, our boriculture stuff is it adds 15 percent okay and that is is interesting and I guess it's just person specific basically but you know I, I understand there's not a lot of people that love trees i mean there are a lot of people that love trees and but there's not a lot of people that love the maintenance to the trees right and that can get expensive and it's a lot of work and so i think that you know obviously it's person specific but for us it matters so try to let this truck go through here really quick we're in tight quarters on these streets and they're trying to squeeze through so Yeah. Okay, and so one of the next things is, so we are a member of this program with you guys, and we thought that it was very affordable for the number of mature trees that we have in the front and in the back. And um, so basically it's a maintenance program and you guys call it AIM. So tell me a little bit about AIM, what it stands for, what it entails, things like that. Yes. Um, so that's a, a new product we just rolled out this year. We've, we've actually done the quarterly service that you're on for quite some time, uh, but we took it a little step further. AIM actually stands for Arbor Image Maintenance. And, it, and then we put on their membership. So it's AIM membership. It's actually a membership that uh, it, it opens you up to all kinds of different things. Uh, but it's really based on the type of trees and the soil that you are dealing with. As far as we have two, two different options. Uh, we've been revising that. I apologize if you've seen marketing material, three different options. We're actually finally getting it fine tuned to where it actually works. But, uh, uh, but it, 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 with, with mature trees, like we had discussed earlier, these trees have been here for a lot of years. All we're doing is supplementing the soil with what's really being taken away by the things we discussed earlier. Okay. Whereas our AIM-10 program is more specific to, uh, let's take a, a new addition, new home addition, where the builder has come in for engineering requirements and had to scrape all that topsoil off in order to put the foundation in so that it's level. Well, all that topsoil has been scraped away. So at this point, we're working with zero organic matter in the soil. So it's gonna take a lot more repetition in order to build soil life back into that soil. So the type of, pro, the type of AIM membership that you would be involved in is based on what your, really your needs are. Sure. And we've got so much new home construction that we had to come up with an alternative uh, that addressed the soil. Okay. That's really what it's about. And you guys will take a look when you're here addressing the soil and the feeding of the trees. You guys will be on the lookout for pests and insect disease, any any sort of, you know, fungal or bacteria disease, or I don't know if that's the right term, yeah, fungal or bacteria. bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, you guys will be on the lookout for that. And maybe, you know, you guys catch something that, you know, I don't see with my eye. I'm not a trained arborist. I, I don't necessarily know. Or it may be something that's like, hey, I, this kind of looks funky, but I'm just going to let it go. Well, with this program, you guys are paying attention to those things when you're out here, you know, servicing the trees and things like that, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and just to kind of summarize what you just said, I mean, uh, you know, the biggest thing, and you did mention it, but but is the biggest thing that we battle is overwatering. Okay. In Oklahoma, we have clay soil. It's very dense. Which I think, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I think, like you said, yes, the soil is clay, and people don't realize it gets really hot here in the summer, 100 plus. For those people that are watching that aren't familiar with Oklahoma's climate, we are a 7A gardening climate, and a lot of our soil is clay. And just because it's hot outside, people tend to, to overwater, and then you guys are coming in trying to correct those issues. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I believe we're 7B. 7B, I, sorry. Okay, Stillwater 7A, sorry. but nonetheless, uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, yes, uh, we do have to, because clay holds water. It's just like a bowl. So when you overwater and you replenish, because your annuals have little small root systems, they need that constant influx of water. Whereas a tree, the, the, the best way to describe it is, is uh, uh, deep 
infrequent watering. So water deeply, 30, 45 minutes, twice a week in, in the hot summer, some, maybe three some, on some of our summers. But, you know, versus shallow, infrequent okay. watering. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb. But uh, because your trees, uh, because the clay holds water, that tree's going to tap into that that uh, ability. It's called macropores. It'll 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 fill up its macropores. Or excuse me, micropores. The the macropores are the ones that are easily saturated right after rain. It's the micropores that hold the, the water deeply, which those fine absorbing roots will find okay. when we do have flat periods of, of drought. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we want to keep those trees on the lookout for water, and they're going to find it. Uh, it's how they grow to be such large, you know, specimen, you know, perennials. But um, so, so with so overwatering, that's the biggest uh, culprit that we battle. So yes, we're constantly monitoring watering regimens. Okay. That's a huge part of our AIM uh, membership. Uh, soil types, uh, obviously clay. There are parts of the city. As a matter of fact, you guys have some pretty decent soil in this neighborhood. Yeah, it's not all that bad. It's a dark. It's a darker dirt not quite so red and it's a little bit better than clay yeah. so and the proofs in the trees look at how look at the height of these trees you don't find this everywhere around the city right so um but thirdly you know insect pest certainly you know the key is to eliminate as much pesticide use as we can it's kind of like us if we take vitamins and we exercise and eat right we're going to fight off common things ailments uh, same thing with trees. If we keep the health boosted through regular feeding and fertilization, they are two different things. But, you know, as long as we're keeping that boosted, the trees are going to naturally fend off pests on their own. But we do monitor for them. And then when we do have to treat them, the method is important. Uh, I won't go into too much detail there. That's another podcast. But uh, secondly, uh, podcast. Sorry. Uh, YouTube video. video. YouTube yeah. video. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, but... But you know the, the method, but also catching the insect in its uh, correct life cycle to be treated. If if we can catch it, uh, for example, bagworms are out right now with evergreens. You know the 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 boys and the girls are getting together at this point, whereas the girls will soon go up into the bag and lay the eggs. Okay. If we can catch and 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 eliminate that in the beginning, we're not going to have an outbreak of bagworms. So it's all about the timing and knowing when the pests are active and fungal too, that includes fungal. So um, all these things. And then the, 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 the last thing that's so important is communicating this to the client. You know, one of the things I find in my own use of services these days is the lack of being able to uh, get commu good communication. Sure. Or how about just thank you? And, and, and hey, we, we do appreciate our clients, I assure you. But, but you know, being able to communicate what's going on to you, you know, so that you can make these adjustments uh, or we can work together with, say, your sprinkler person to eliminate overwatering. So the program is, is much more than just coming out and, and feeding or fertilizing. It's, it's much more detailed and, uh, you know, it's just, it's a much needed thing when you start dealing with something that you, unlike grass where you spray your weeds, you see your weeds die. Trees take, you know, time to develop sure. roots and, and things like that. So Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, I thank you so much for coming out today, thank Corey. You. I think, I think this video will have lots of great information and answer most of the questions that I received on social media. So you guys, their Instagram is at Arbor Image Tree Care and their website is thearborimage.com. So if you guys need any tree care needs, reach out to them. I can assure you that they're great. They've done wonderful things for us and been, like you said, lots of communication, very responsive. And so yeah, give them a, give them a like and a shout on Instagram. And I hope to do more videos with you soon, Corey. Yes, thank you.